Well, hello there! <coughs> and welcome back to YouTube.com. Gosh! Well, hooked up. So today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I would like to talk about a particular individual who I believe, and I think many others believe, is probably the most accomplished uh, electric guitarist in the world. That is, of course, Mr. Guthrie Govan. I first discovered Guthrie, I think, way back in like... Uh, I'm gonna say like 2007 or 2008 maybe like way back in the early days of YouTube There was a really cool like a uh, sort of guitar shreds compilation video that was going around at the time called guitar suck I think named after the um, the Bumblefoot song and Guthrie showed up a couple of times in that video And I was like what? What, what is this? How can how can one individual? Be that good. And what you have to understand is like, it's not just about technical capability because like Guthrie's technique is like insane. It's on another level. But there's one thing that makes Guthrie stand out from his peers. And that's the fact that he is a world-class improviser. Like he can improvise at a level that's better than most people can probably actually like, you know, compose a solo. It's that good. Right, so what we're gonna do today, I've picked out like three different videos, which I think really, really showcase uh, Guthrie's ability, both his technique and his improvisational skills. We're gonna watch along together. I'm probably gonna pull lots of like gurning faces, like, whoa! And I, maybe I'll try and sort of like uh, explain some things that are going on, play a little bit of, look, little bit of that, you know? So without further ado, I think, uh, let's get into it. Okay, so the first video we're gonna be looking at is his solo from a Hans Zimmer concert, who he tours with, uh, from the Man of Steel, uh, song from the soundtrack, I guess. Let's do it. When I first saw this, I was like, I was quite shocked to see that he's, uh, you know, fully grey-haired now, white-haired even. I guess lockdown took its toll on uh, Paul Guthrie. <laughs> Rocks that look though, it looks great. <laughs> Hang on, I just want to try and work out the, uh, that main theme. Like a a harmonic minor thing. That's such a that's such a typical Guthrie thing. Where he sort of like does a sort of like a quick sort of like arpeggio up. Okay. And like a really really fast like a flurry of uh, notes down the scale off that. I was like, no! Him. It's just insane to think that, like, this is completely improvised. I couldn't even write something that good if it took me, like, you know, hours to sit there and try and meticulously work something out. And he's just sort of, like, you know, bashing it out off the top of his head. It's ludicrous. Oh, key change. I don't know, it's just something about his note choices that are always like on point. They really emphasize what's going on harmonically. Oh, you hear how he really accentuates that uh, other modulation as well. He's in a lick here. And then you can really hear that change when he goes to like the, the C over E. I'm not really sure what he's playing. Sort of thing like that. Oh, but then, but then, this is how you really know he knows what he's doing because, like, he does this cool sort of like uh, tension building thing with like the chromatics and the diminished thing, and then he goes into like a big sort of like held bend, sort of like the release. Yeah. Again, he's like sort of sliding into it. See, that's what a good guitar solo is all about. It's just tension and release, you know, like building up those moments of tension and then like releasing it. You know, like you just sort of holding in a piss for ages and then like you can finally let it go like, ah! oh. Blinding, blinding. 
bit of Steve Vai going on there. That is just absolutely amazing, in my opinion. Just uh, how somebody can come up with that off the top of their head is just like... <laughs> Alrighty, next up we have a uh, another improvised solo from like a jam session. I, uh, if I remember rightly, it was from, I think, John Petrucci's like uh, guitar camp or something. So you've got, uh, you've got John Petrucci, you've got Andy James, Tosin, I think Mike Mangini on drums. I'm not sure who the other two guys are. I think the bassist is John Petrucci's bassist. And then, of course, Guthrie on the left here. F sharp. Love that the anticipation in the room ready for his solo, everyone's like. Again, okay, really highlighting that chord change there. Oh my god, that phrase is so cheeky. It's all like does this like a tiny little like I don't know, something like that. And then just like, anyway. <laughs> you know, that, that's how you know that he just, he has complete control over his instrument. Like he, uh, he can put in those funny sort of like quirky bits and just like be completely confident with that. A lot of guys when they're improvising, you know, they're sort of like concentrating so hard, trying to like try not to fuck up, making sure they're playing in the right scale, you know, and they're, they're not really thinking about like any cool, like little fun, quirky things they can put in to like break it up. Alright, that's really cool. So, you can see, like, he's very aware of what's going on around him as well. You know, he's hearing that sort of syncopated, like, uh, fill uh, that Mike Mancini's doing. And he's sort of, like, zones in on that. And he's, like, matching it. So he knows he's doing something. So cool. Again, his trademark sort of like <laughs> sliding into a sharp bend. You can hear like here he's doing like um he's playing in odd groupings. Everything sort of like did it did it did it. He's even playing like sevens or fives or something. So like did it did it did it did it did it did it did it. You know, it just makes it you know, a bit more sort of like uh, engaging to the ear to like break it up every so often to have these weird groupings. <laughs> That's probably like the coolest lick of the whole thing. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Is that cool? Oh, okay. It's like a it's like a Lydian dominant chord. All right, let's see if we can match that. Madness, man. Only Guthrie could come up with that. <laughs> right, so next up, we're going to uh, look at a slightly less flashy example compared to the last two. But I think this one really highlights uh, how amazing Guthrie's ear is and his, uh, you know, sense of phrasing and melody. So, uh... Let's check it out. But if I try to ma make my playing sound more I in tune with the progression. Oh, it's beautiful. See, the producer. Again, you know, that's just completely off the top of his head. You know, that's a better melody than, you know, 90% of us could come up with, you know, actually putting some thought into it. It's mad. So nice. And also what you can hear, it's like, you know, each mini phrase is like a call and response. You know, this is how you build a good melody. And this is, this is the basis, basically, of all phrasing. It's just you want to call these little, like, question and answers. So it starts something like, uh... You know, that's the question. And then it goes... You see? Sort of like a call and response. And then the next bit... 
finishes the first question on the D though. Uh, um, that sort of leaves it hanging a bit. Because you don't want to finish on that note, it sounds weird. And, you know, then resolving back to the home note there. Players like Guthrie, you know, their ears are just so like attuned to music. That it's, I know, it's just like another sense. He's sort of like, you know, coming up with his music in his head, and then his uh, his fingers are just like, I don't know, like a, a typewriter, or well, that's an old example, like a boomer. You know, like a keyboard, just like typing out, or dictating what exactly it is he hears in his head. You know, he's not thinking, um, oh, I don't know, which scale am I going to use now? You know, he's just thinking of the music in his head, and then just translating it onto his instrument. And there you have it, guys. In my opinion, the best electric guitar player on the planet. But please do let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree? And should I do more of these little like breakdown videos? If so, on who or what band? Let me know. And as always, lads and ladettes, thank you so much for watching. Love each and every one of you. And I shall see you again very soon. All right, mate. Do that. Do that. Then do that. Nice one.